Most people who know me openly know that I am a writer. I have been a writer since literally college, and I discovered my writing gifts and my skill sets for writing in college. I wrote my first book, my first manual, my first ideas on paper that took 30, 40, 100 pages and more in college. I have also been a writer of journalistic oriented newsletters for my business, both my language school and my marketing practice. I'm also an avid writer in that I have written now up to date about 12 books. They're different kinds of books is not true. They are about my industry and they're also about my spirituality that is sort of not covered very well in the world. By implying that I'm a writer, it means that I'm a scripter and how I go about scripting is either ad-libbing based on my current knowledge or by doing research if I have the access to the appropriate materials either online or offline in the library or through interviewing and investigating people's careers. I have been a long-time journalist, which is a skill set that implies automatically that I am an avid listener in both dialogic and divergent thinking. There's one other concept of thinking, but at the present moment I'm forgetting what it's called, and I'm not going to try and spout it off to you. That's your job to learn. But what I can tell you is that I'm very passionate about listening. I am very passionate about interviewing, and my job, I feel, in the way that I help people with my consulting practice is based foundationally and almost wholly on the ability to listen carefully from three sides of a story. I've talked about this regularly for God's glory, but I can also talk about it regularly in the terms of journalism. Journalism's job is to report three sides of the story. It's often why we hear about, for example, the political marketplace, and we hear the Democratic sides, we hear about the, about the Republican sides, and then we have a reporter that tries to summarize the issues at hand and the potential of the pros and cons of what could and couldn't happen in something like that. So generally speaking, when I'm listening to people, I am thinking not much at all. I'm also not thinking about what my response will be, which is something that most immature listeners do. They are reactive in their listening. They are too verbal in their listening, and it's a major mistake, and it is a sign to professional people and educated people and influential and affluential people as immaturity. You do not need to interrupt someone speaking with your response. That means you're not really listening. They also don't need verbal affirmations of uh-huh, 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 or things like that, or I hear you, unless you sense from the orator, the speaker, that they need that because they don't think you're listening. That usually comes about in eye contact or body language. The art and gift of listening is actually listening without responding in your mind or emoting in your mind about what you hear. What we know most about retail workers, especially people who work in gas stations and restaurants and fast food, is they are emotional listeners. It is not wise to be an emotional listener because what they end up doing is often eavesdropping on a phone conversation and then reacting to the consumer as if they're talking to them. That in itself is immoral. The individual is clearly not reacting or not talking to you. It is also possible that we do try to be a little bit of a, consume, uh, a community servant and that if someone's on the cell phone saying, I have no clue where I am right now, it is, is a kindness of a community member who overhears that to say, you're at Prospect and Green or whatever it may be to give a little help to that person so they can articulate to their friend or friend, friend or family where they are. So there is some opportunity for overstepping your bounds, but there is no missteps in that kind of reactive listening. But when it comes to consumer rights, when it comes to privileges, you are bound by the privilege most of the time of confidentiality. In the influential, affluential, and business community, it is presumed that unless you're in a networking event, that all conversations that are one-on-one -on -one are private. All relationships that are handled one-on-one -on, -one on the cell phone, on the telephone, over email, over uh, teleconferencing that are one-on-one -on -one are basically have a proprietary construct of confidentiality. That means that you're not going to talk about them unless you gain permission 
or you're not going to talk about them unless you need a little advice, but you're going to be very, very careful about how you share or who you share that information with.